The Environmental Protection Agency's Inspector General is launching an inquiry into Jackson, Mississippi's drinking water emergency after tens of thousands of residents were left without water when flooding caused failures at the city's water treatment plant. Water pressure in most of Jackson has since been restored, but a boil water notice still remains in place. In a Meet the Press exclusive interview, Chuck spoke to Vice President Harris about the crisis. Here we are. The United States of America. Yeah. This is a capital city of one of our 50 states. And it's tragic what's happening. And there's no... And it's tragic. Look, state, city, federal. Everybody's let these people down, haven't they? Well, I, I've talked to the mayor, mm -hmm. Lumumba, and, um, and the president has talked to him, and we have um, the, the governor there has declared a state of emergency. We, FEMA is sending... Well, everybody's him. trying now. And, but, but isn't but, that but, the frustration? Well... It's now. <laughs> however... That was, it is a Jackson, Mississippi, that is an example of why we were pushing for the infrastructure law that now is the law of the land. So that we are sending billions of dollars to places like Jackson to upgrade what is a decaying infrastructure across our country. And so help is coming because we actually came into office knowing that generations of leaders have been talking about fixing America's infrastructure and failed. And we actually got it done. And as climate change creates more extreme weather that pushes crumbling infrastructure like water plants and sewer systems and power grids to their limit, crises like Jackson's raise new questions about environmental justice, where money to shore up infrastructure has and has not gone in the past and where it is and is not going right now. Earlier this year, the mayor of Jackson called the state government's attitudes toward the city paternalistic and racist, noting Jackson was the only city that had to jump through oversight hoops for its infrastructure funding. Joining me now to discuss this critical topic is Robert Bullard, the founding director of the Bullard Center for Environmental and Climate Justice and professor of urban planning and environmental policy at Texas Southern University. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I think you heard Chuck really hit the heart of this when he said to the vice president, everyone's trying now that there's a crisis. But where was the trying? Where was the help? Where was the planning to prevent this crisis from happening? How did we get here? Well, what we see in Jackson uh, is uh, a textbook case of a slow moving disaster, mm. a disaster that historically uh, started when you started to see white flight uh, leaving cities and the flight of dollars leaving cities and as cities transitioned to becoming more and more uh, black and, and, and poor, you started to get it more difficult to get monies from the state. So infrastructure has, has long been a major challenge, but when you involve uh, race and politics, it become a much more challenging uh, uh, issue. Well, and, and Director Bullard Jackson is 83 percent black. How does that inform the lack of help that it has gotten over these many years to create uh, the capacity for this to happen? Well, if you look at the state of Mississippi, uh, and it's graded a D minus when it comes to infrastructure. The nation as a whole, as graded by the American Society of Civil Engineers, is given a grade of C minus. So when you talk about water issues and um, infrastructure, when it comes to schools, uh, roads, bridges, dams, et cetera, when you look at that infrastructure and, and drill down to uh, people of color communities and, mm. and, and poor communities, it's not a C minus, it's not a D minus, it's an F. It's mm. a failure. And that money uh, actually uh, means the difference between whether or not you have a system that where people can get clean drinking water or whether or not you have to wait uh, for, for that water, like in Jackson. You heard the vice president say help is on the way. Mississippi slated to get about $430 million from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act to fix its water system. Jackson specifically got about $25 million from the American Rescue Plan. When you hear those numbers, big numbers, but is that enough? And clearly it's, it's not coming soon enough. But, but do you think that that will help deal with the root causes of this crisis? Uh, it will help. If, in fact, 
the money flow to need. And oftentimes when federal dollars go to states, uh, in many cases where you have red states and blue cities, there oftentimes is a roadblock in getting that money uh, to those cities. And particularly when those cities are predominantly black or people of color, a majority people of color. And so mm -hmm. what we have advocated for many decades is for whenever possible, federal dollars go directly to the cities and municipalities and the counties and bypass the state because in many cases, states create uh, artificial barriers and, not, uh, and will not send that money uh, to the cities that's needed. Jackson is that textbook example of that. Well, th that is such a critical point in, in terms of making sure that that money actually gets to the communities that are hurting. There's also obviously a, a social and systemic crisis that we are seeing play out here. How do you address that? That's not something that can be addressed with those dollars and cents from the government sending money. Well, I think it's a it's an infrastructure problem that is not just uh, uh, dealing with water issues. If it, it's an infrastructure problem when we deal with schools, crumbling schools, infrastructure, uh, cr uh, crumbling roads and bridges, and looking at this, the idea of how can cities, counties, and municipalities and the state work together to ensure that, uh, that investments are, are used wisely and that we don't leave communities uh, on the other side of the road or on the other side of the levee or leave them behind. And what has happened historically is that poor communities and communities of color have been left behind and poor people pay taxes. And so they mm -hmm. should have the same kinds of, of uh, advantages of having clean water, clean air, uh, safe schools, yeah. uh, playgrounds and all of that. But that's not the Robert, case. Robert Bullard, thank you so very much for your perspective. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.